Welcome back. You are watching the Oasis Focus on Finance show. I'm Shafiq Morton and our guests in studio, Hugo Barnard and uh, Hassan Matala. We've just been discussing proposed uh, reforms to the retirement uh, fund management process. We finished with that. Now for some exciting news. And this is the launch of a brand new Oasis product, the Oasis International Crescent Balanced Low Equity Feeder Fund. Sounds a long title, but it's something that you've been looking for. Hugo, the first question about this fund. What are its essential um, components? What makes it different to other funds? The investment objective of the Oasis Crescent International Balanced Low Equity Feeder Fund is to provide medium to long term growth to investors. The fund is classified as a foreign asset allocation flexible portfolio in terms of the ASISA fund classification code, which means that the underlying asset classes will be equity, property, Islamic sukuks, and other related income instruments. Hassan, this uh, low equity feeder fund, it's part of a basket or a collective of investments. We're always told, don't put all your eggs around baskets, so we have a big basket. Um, tell us more about this fund. Sure. I think very importantly, you know, when we talked about, we've always talked about on this, on this program and, and in many other forums as well, diversification is important. And diversification, when we look at it, we look at it from, in fact, there's probably five key elements towards diversification. You've got diversification from a geographic perspective, very important. And when you look at it from this fund perspective, you're getting geographic diversification from a global perspective. Because you're investing in an international fund that's investing across the globe. Secondly, currency diversification. So you're getting diversification. Now remember, you, you're investing your rands in this fund. So essentially speaking, you're taking your hardened rands, putting it into this fund. But the rands are now being invested into hard currencies across the globe. So be it the US dollar, be it the euro, be it the British pound, the yen is being diversified across, essentially speaking, mainly largely reserve currencies from a global perspective. So that's giving you currency diversification. The third aspect is giving you diversification across sectors. Now, you know, it's important to look at it from a, when you look at it from a South African perspective. So for example, in South Africa, we will be invested in many sectors which we, very, which we have very strong industries in South Africa. You know, for example, we, when we're investing in the, in the mining sector or we're investing in the retail sector or the like. Those are relatively, if you look at the sectors, they're big parts of the, of the South African landscape and the like. However, there may be certain parts where we actually don't get uh, certain, a strong exposure. For example, the technology sector. We don't have exposure to world-class sector companies within that sector in South Africa. By investing in this and getting the diversification from a sector perspective, you're getting a diversification towards technology, towards energy, towards telecommunications, various different sectors giving you that diversification as well. Fourthly and very importantly as well, you're getting instrument diversification. Now, when you look at it from this perspective, I highlighted earlier just talking about the sector diversification. Very importantly, within those sectors, the ability to invest in high quality instruments within those sectors. So be it a, the equity sector or the property sector. So for example, on the, on the equity side, investing in the likes of a Microsoft, a world-class technology company, not listed in South Africa, but listed on the US stock exchange. Gives you an ability to invest in that, giving you diversification from an instrument perspective. Or, for example, on the property side, we can invest, for example, in, uh, in high-class property companies based in Europe or based in, in the UK. You've got the ability to invest in those instruments there. And then lastly, but very importantly, it's the asset class diversification. Now, Hugo highlighted that the fund can invest in different assets such as equity, property, and income. Now, this being is a Sharia-compliant fund. So very importantly, it adheres to the standards of the IOFI. Now, IOFI is essentially speaking, what the, it's an acronym for Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions. Now, they've obviously set global standards in terms of Sharia regulations, and it's across the board. Very importantly, our Sharia Advisory Board adheres essentially to the, the globally best practice and globally accepted standards. Now, from an instrument perspective, you're investing in equity, property, and income. I, I think importantly to highlight from an asset class, 
by investing in those different asset classes, it ensures that you're getting diversification and ensures a lower volatility over time. Now, this being a low equity means that obviously from that perspective, it has a lower exposure towards equity. So just to give you a perspective in terms of the asset uh, uh, sort of allocation at present, so it's around currently around 40% of the fund is allocated towards equities. And then from a property perspective, currently it's around 16%. But generally you'll find the range for this fund will generally be, be around between 15 to 20% from a property exposure. Being a lower equity exp uh, fund, it means obviously the focus is to try and ensure a lower risk for investors within this fund. So it will tend to have a higher proportion of income within this fund. So the income allocation is currently around 45%. And that's to ensure that you will find that that income gives you a lot of that stability and downside when financial markets tend to be, have their volatile periods as well. And that's very important. And you can see it has been reflected in the performance over time. So for example, this fund, the global, the, uh, so remember this is a feeder fund. So it's feeding into the global fund, which is domiciled in our, our global fund, which is domiciled in Dublin. That fund itself in dollar terms, has since inception, which has been from uh, 2011, has delivered an annualized return in US dollars of 7.1%. And if you compare that to global inflation or OECD inflation as we normally look at, that was 1.7%. So it's given a real return of about 5.4% over that period of time in dollar terms. It's very competitive. Very importantly though, as you now have the opportunity to take your RANDs, remember we spoke, uh, I think a few programs back about global investments, where you as an investor have different types of how you can get exposure towards global investments. This is a very easy alternative to get exposure. You're not utilizing your foreign allowance, so no need to worry about getting a tax certificate or anything of that sort. You're taking your RANDs, putting it into a RAND-based fund, but guess what, you're getting 100% foreign exposure, and it's as simple as ABC. Now, you've mentioned a lot of benefits, Hassan, and there was one term that you used, uh, geographic diversity. What are the benefits of this thing called geographic diversity? Sure. Geographic diversity is very important. I think very, if you look at it, you know, being expo if, for example, you invested only in South Africa, which is essentially part of the broader emerging market groups. I think it's important for an investor to ensure that they diversify geographically to get, ensure that, as you highlighted earlier, all your eggs are not in one basket. It's important. There are times when, for example, our economy faces significant pressure. So, for example, we're currently experiencing a relatively lower growth environment. We've got our challenges. For example, challenges are on the mining sector, challenges around we've had the electricity constraints, which has held back the economy during this period of time. Now, by having that geographic di exposure, the diversification, you're ensuring that you're benefiting from those economies that are doing relatively well. So for example, currently globally, the developed world, for example, US, UK, are growing faster than what we are growing. The, the economies are, are doing relatively well and they, they're seeing a, a nice uptick from in their economies as well. So by having that geographic expo exposure, we're ensuring that we, uh, where, while we may be having certain tough times, certain periods, we're benefiting from other economies that are doing relatively well. Hugo, with the, with the status of the RAND, uh, this all sounds very attractive, specifically to a South African consumer. Run us through some of the operational aspects of this fund. Sure. Like Hassan mentioned, this is a feeder fund which invests in an underlying global fund. Now, the underlying fund is the Oasis Crescent Global Low Equity Balanced Fund, which is Thomas Island in Dublin. It's managed by the Oasis Global Management Company. Um, which ensures that the Sharia standards of that underlying fund is of a high quality and is under the control of the group. Um, it's also subject to the scrutiny of our Sharia board, uh, which enhances the, the eth ethical compliance of it. Um, from an operating point of view, the fact that the fund uh, is managed by an associate company means that the same high standards are maintained as for the South African investments for the, the, the feeder fund itself. Now, Hugo, you've mentioned that uh, this fund and Hassan has as well, that a vital element of this product is its, uh, is its income element as it were. When can, when will this income be made available to, to investors? 
The income in the underlying fund is generally uh, d uh, distributed on a quarterly basis, and so too in South Africa, the, the South African investors will receive the income on a quarterly basis. Hassan, any, any final remarks to this uh, brand new Oasis product, the low equity feeder fund? Sure. I think obviously, you know, it's, uh, it's exciting times. Importantly as well, I think for uh, investors out there, it, it, this is a product that allows for investors to invest in a, in a relatively low risk type of a product because it's a low equity balance fund. Importantly, it's giving you global diversification, so geographic currency, and we talked about sector asset allocation instrument. Very important, you're getting that diversification in a relatively low risk product. Importantly, you're utilizing your RANDs to get offshore exposure. And I think it's a great opportunity for all investors out there. We've made it very accessible to everyone. If you look at it, you allow those that on a monthly basis can contribute 500 Rand per month towards this product, and you're getting world-class uh, investment products at 500 Rand a month, and giving you a long-term exposure to the foreign investment market. Secondly, those of you that prefer rather doing from a lump sum perspective, you can invest a minimum lump sum of 2,000 rands and you will get exposure to this. So I think, you know, importantly, long-term focus product to ensure that you're getting exposure to uh, the foreign uh, market, but importantly getting exposure to equities, property and income from a foreign perspective. And I think it's a great opportunity for all our listeners out there, all our viewers out there, to ensure that they get exposure to this type of product from a long-term perspective. Hassan Matala and Hugo Barnard, thanks for chatting to us today. Thank you, and thank you. You have been watching the Oasis Focus and Finance Show. In today's show, we discussed firstly proposed uh, changes to the retirement management process, the management of retirement funds. Secondly, we introduced to you a brand new Oasis product, the Low Equity Feeder Fund. Should you wish to contact us, call 0860 100 786 or email info at oasiscrescent.com. Until next time, I'm your host, Shafiq Morton. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.